look, 2020 has been an incredible year in the WWE. Yes, we've missed live audiences. Yes, we've missed being in arenas full of people. But who would have thought walking into 2020 that this would be the year that we would not only watch a a legend's eye get gouged out of his skull, but we would also watch one of our most beloved characters literally set on fire. And I don't mean Kane set on fire in Inferno Match's arm. I mean turned into a human torch set on fire. I mean, we watched we watched a WWE legend commit murder, felony, arsony on TLC. It was amazing. There is one lesson here. And that is when we walk into a pay-per-view with very low expectations, they are very often exceeded. At least mine are. You know, we walked into TLC and we'll, we'll address all of it. We walked into TLC, I think, without a lot of hype. This is not a pay-per-view that, in my opinion, had been uh, advertised well in the sense that we knew it was happening, but the matches themselves, the stories behind the matches, I think a lot of them had not been fully developed, and one of them was the Firefly, Funhouse, Arson, Inferno match between Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt. We knew Randy Orton and The Fiend were going to have a match, but this week, I think is when most of us found out that it was going to be a Firefly Inferno match. And we were literally on our Patreon Zoom meeting at patreon.com slash notsamwrestling. We do a Zoom before all these pay-per-views, and we were debating whether this was going to be a cinematic match, whether it would be a traditional Inferno match. And the answer was, while it wasn't a traditional Inferno match, it was absolutely a traditional Thunderdome match match, they could just kind of have the Inferno go a little bit wider than a traditional Inferno match. The Fiend ends the match. Going into this match, I go, oh, okay, well, if you're doing the match by Inferno match rules, it's an easy way for The Fiend to pick up a loss. The Fiend is a character that should never be beaten. Goldberg, I'm talking to you. The Fiend should never be defeated. He's that type of a character. He should never be pinned. He should never be submitted. Nothing like that. But if you're in an Inferno match, look, when you got fire all over the place and you're a careless, reckless, insane villain, odds are you might find yourself on fire. You know what I mean? The Joker didn't lose all that often, but he also didn't leave without a few scratches because he was nuts. He didn't put his own safety as a priority. And I don't think that The Fiend puts his safety above harming others. So the idea that The Fiend uh, would lose this Inferno match was not only not lost on me, but a probability to me. There were many great moments. I loved uh, the trail of gasoline leading to the chair, almost like a, like a, the plane in Die Hard 2, where that trail of gasoline is going from the wing, and that's all I could think of as Randy Orton sat unresponsive in that rocking chair, and the, and the flaming line started approaching him closer and closer. I thought, no, I've seen how this plays out. There's going to be a massive explosion. Luckily, Randy Orton, for his sake, got out of there. But the match ends, I mean, brilliantly. Let's, let's, not pretend this is something that it wasn't. It ended brilliantly. The Fiend gets set on fire. And I mean, not a little bit of fire. He was very much on fire. Now, clearly, he left his jacket on throughout the whole match because this was a possibility. But I thought it was a very good uh, additional thing that Randy Orton wrestled in a full sweatsuit. If The Fiend had left his jacket on throughout the whole match... And Randy were just wrestling in his trunks. It would almost be like, why are we even bothering? We know how this is going to go. The fact that Randy wore a full sweatsuit and The Fiend covered up his arms, it made it so you could say either one of them 
was doing it. But but when, when, once they both did it, it became logical that the psychology of this match would be that both of those characters would cover their bodies because there's all this real, real hot fire around them. Now, we learned from the interview that we did with The Undertaker and Kane on the Not Sam Wrestling on the WWE Network show that it's like impossible to breathe in a traditional Inferno match because the ring gets so hot because the flames are so close to you and it's just sucking all the oxygen in and just pumping heat out. So it's probably a little easier to do this match with the flames a little bit further away from you behind the barricades, but still not an easy thing to pull off. Um, But seeing the Fiend lock on the mandible claw, Randy Orton pushes him back towards the open flame. The Fiend's entire back and his arms and the back of his legs, he is on fire. And this ain't a prop Fiend because he then runs into the ring to attack Randy Orton. See, this is the part, the 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 ending ending was so sensational that I almost feel like we're not going to give enough credit to the part that we saw right before it, which was Randy Orton pulled off RKOing the Fiend while the Fiend was on fire. I think we give credit to both the Fiend and to Randy Orton for it. You should see me at a birthday party trying to light a candle, staying away from that open flame on the match. I'm so scared of it. I don't want to burn my little fingertipsies. <laughs> trying to get away from it. It's so hot. I don't like it. I don't like hot. And I'm sitting there watching the Fiend Bray Wyatt, who if you look at this dude, he must just lift and eat and lift and eat and lift and eat because he just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. But you have a 300 plus, plus pound mass of humanity charging your way and you RKO that man? Kudos. Kudos. The Fiend hits the ground and Randy Orton is staring at him. He's kicking him. I figured... You know, we're going horror movie on this, and it's going to be a jump scare. Randy Orton kicks him, and then the Fiend jumps up, gives him a mandible claw. Technically, Randy Orton wins because the Fiend was on fire when he got RKO'd. But the Fiend still somehow stands, and the commentary goes, I don't believe it. He got an RKO while he was on fire, and the Fiend still stands strong. But that's not how it ended at all. I was way off on my predictable guess, my pessimistic predictable guess because uh what happens is randy checks to see if the fiend is is responsive the fiend is not responsive as a flaming rko will do that to you and randy turns around he gets the gasoline canister that was used to light that rocking chair on fire still got some gasoline in there he pours gasoline all over the fiend he finds a special match in that matchbox just the right size to light a giant monster on fire. <laughs> then he throws the match. And the body just goes up in flames. Now, I've heard, we're not even going to address, right? The whole like, well, it was a dummy. Like, I can't, I can't with you guys. If you're sitting there on the internet pointing out, it was not really him. Oh, really? Thanks, man. I appreciate you pointing that out. Or I read one that like, well, you could do that in an empty arena. There's a you you say you say a phrase, right? I could literally set a man on fire and you wouldn't be impressed. It happened tonight. That's what happened. And there's still people going like, yeah, well, you know, it's easy. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. It isn't. So the other question is, well, how does the fiend come back from this? The Fiend burned to death as we left TLC. The visual that we left on was The Fiend's face literally caving in from the amount of flames that were on it. It was incredible. I love professional wrestling. People are like, oh, you like wrestling. Do you like any other sports? No, because there are no other sports where the villains get set on fire. (laughs) Who wants to watch that? You spend the whole season building up what a villain Dennis Rodman is. And you get to the championship game and nobody sets anybody on fire. What a waste of everyone's time. Here? Fire. I turned into Beavis from Beavis and Butthead. 
fire, fire, fire. It was, it was awesome. So I've said from the beginning, from the beginning of The Fiend, I've said this is a horror movie monster. When I did my show on the WWE Network about uh, 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 not inspiration, influence, I talked about the influence. I said that, that when you look at horror movies, The Fiend is probably most like Jason Voorhees, where Kane has a very Michael Myers quality to him in the sense that there is a villain behind that mask, but the mask starts to represent everything because you can't possibly figure out what could be behind that mask. There, there's something human behind that mask, but it just seems like it's just darkness. Like there's just an evil essence behind the mask. That's Kane and Michael Myers. Jason Voorhees is a straight up killing machine monster. Sometimes he moves slow and methodically. Sometimes he goes real, real fast. Nothing kills him. He's not alive, but he's not dead. And there is nothing that you can do that will satiate him. There is no reasoning. There is nothing that you can give him or nothing that you can do for him that will stop him from killing. I made these comparisons between The Fiend and Jason Voorhees, not only because this is the most horror movie monster we've ever had in WWE, right down to the fact that Tom Savini, icon of the genre, designed his mask and the title that he wore as champion. But also because of the way we react to him. I don't have any time. The same people that say, well, The Fiend's a heel are the ones that, like, the people who think on that simple level are the same ones that don't think on a level with enough depth to understand that the Edge versus Randy Orton greatest wrestling match of all time was a conceptual piece. It was like the, the person that will say the fiend is a heel and just leave it at that is the same person that will say, well, I don't know if the greatest wrestling match of all time was the greatest match of all time. There were some better, but it was pretty good. Like you one note, simple plebeian. I don't have time to have this conversation with you. So if that's where you're at right now, Click, turn it off, don't subscribe, don't leave a review on iTunes, none of it. I don't, don't leave a rating, I don't care. But if you are ready to think a little bit deeper, then follow me, if you will. The Fiend is not a traditional heel, but he's not a traditional babyface. The same way Jason Voorhees is not a traditional villain in movies. You go to a Friday the 13th movie, and yes, Jason Voorhees, for all intents and purposes, is the bad guy. Jason Voorhees is killing innocent people. Jason Voorhees is hunting down people that you would relate to most. But nobody, nobody goes to a Friday the 13th movie going, I sure hope they kill Jason. Nobody is happy when Jason gets defeated. Everybody is thrilled to find out that he's coming back for another movie. You cheer when there's a great Jason kill. You don't cheer when Jason finally gets his. You know why? Because even though Jason is a villain, and even though G Jason is, is, is committing cardinal sins, he's still cool and interesting and fun to watch. And, and it's this, this id of, it, side of you that is just emotion and reactive. On some level, you wish, you wish on a whim. You could just take a camper in a sleeping bag and tie the end of it up and just smash it against a tree. On some level, not literally. And that's The Fiend. Whether The Fiend is, is wrestling Goldberg or Seth Rollins or Randy Orton or The Miz, anyone. The Fiend could steal The Miz's baby. He broke into the, the, the Miz's house and left a, a toy in the baby's crib. He violated the very sanctity of the Mizanin family. And nobody wants to see the Miz get revenge on the Fiend. Nobody wants to see the Miz defeat the Fiend. On some sick, perverse level, we all want to see the Fiend win. We all want to see the Fiend continue. We all want to see the Fiend develop. 
because we're interested. The same way we go to horror movies and we don't actually want the monster to die. We don't want the monster to die. That's why The Fiend could never be a traditional wrestling heel because he's not a traditional wrestling character. He's a horror movie character. So, yes, you know, there, there are some characters in wrestling that beating them is terrible for the character. He buried the character, right? If, if Keith Lee loses to, I don't know. I don't want to insult it. If, if James Ellsworth comes back, and I don't want to, all due respect to James Ellsworth, but we know the character that James Ellsworth was. If he comes back and he gets a clean victory over Keith Lee in three minutes, well, you just buried the Keith Lee character. But if The Fiend is set on fire and burned to a crisp, not only have we not buried the Fiend character, we've only made it stronger. There was a conversation going on in the Not Sam Wrestling Patreon Discord room. How does the Fiend come back from this? How does the Fiend not come back from this? He just comes back. He's the Fiend. I mean, look, when you bend, when you start bending the rules of logic for a character, you can't then take other rules of logic and apply it to the character. The Fiend disappears and reappears at will. The Fiend literally just appeared in the middle of a ring while his opponent had his finisher on him. The lights went out and the lights came back on and Randy Orton is laying on top of The Fiend. Randy Orton threw Bray Wyatt from the funhouse in a box and locked it and lit it on fire. And then the fiend popped out of the flaming box. If the fiend can just appear in a locked flaming box, don't you think the fiend can just appear after getting burned to a crisp? And whether it's because Alexa Bliss does a, 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 a seance and brings the fiend back, whether it's because the Miz goes into a bathroom with the lights off and looks in the mirror and says the fiend three times in a row. Whether it's because a, 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 a bolt of electricity courses through the Thunderdome and somehow hits the burned carcass of the fiend and brings him back to life. It could be any number of things. It doesn't, it, it doesn't matter at this point. We've developed a character that can survive this, Okay. And people go, well, that's ridiculous. Big deal. 1994, January. I'm 10 years old. I love The Undertaker, man. Love The Undertaker. And Yokozuna and Crush and Jeff Jarrett and the Head Shrinkers and Adam Bomb and Big Daddy Cool and Bam Bam Bigelow and every bad guy in WWE beat up The Undertaker, and then they all jump on top of a casket and they lock him inside and the unthinkable has happened. Yokozuna has defeated The Undertaker in a casket match. Then, green smoke begins to billow out of the casket. Somehow there's a camera inside the casket. The Undertaker starts to cut a promo. Electric bolts light the sky. And The Undertaker ascends to the heavens. Like, I guess, up to the roof of the arena, then through the arena, and then into the heavens. And then eight months later, he returned to the WWE to have a match against another Undertaker. Okay? And guess what? I just described to you a year in the life of the greatest wrestling character that's ever been created. Okay? That's The Undertaker. Now I know. The Fiend is not The Undertaker, Sam. What are you, crazy? That's sacrilegious. And that's fine. He's not. However, The Undertaker was not The Undertaker in 1994 either. But regardless of The Undertaker, like we've already set the ground rules for this character. If, if you can't accept the character from the jump, then fine. Don't accept the character from the jump. But you can't dip a toe in, okay? We just saw... A monster get lit on fire. Like, and I mean, his whole face got burned off. It was great. It was great. 
I believe the fiend will be back. I I I I I think that this will change the Randy Orton character. Obviously, I mean, imagine you're getting ready to face Randy Orton in a traditional wrestling match, and you know that the last guy that this guy beat, he well, he burned him to death. <laughs> That's going to do a number on you psychologically. I don't want to wrestle that guy, to tell you the truth. I don't trust him. Well, why don't you trust him? He's a professional. I know he's a professional, but he soaked a guy in gasoline and lit him on fire, and that was after the match. There was no reason. He had already won. He had already won the match. I think it was the best Randy Orton-Bray Wyatt match I've ever seen. That's for sure. 